just so that they can easily access the, the presentation. I'm going to change it again later. Okay, where can I insert a link? I'm going to insert the link here <laughs> and save it. Yeah. Can you refresh your screens? Okay. After, after you publish. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when we go to maver.site and scroll down, you're going to see a link. Uh, yeah. It's a Google Slides link. I'm going to delete it later. <laughs> Sorry about that. But there you go. Okay, so that's the, uh, the presentation contains some links that we need to access oh. along the way. Oh, okay. To so develop our own story spheres. It's just really mendoxai or uh, inconvenient if we type the links ourselves or use the QR code. So let's start. Um, I'm going to be presenting story spheres, which is a, a tool that you can use for digital storytelling. But instead of using pictures, uh, 2D pictures, you're going to be using 360 degree photos and audio and these spheres can be linked to one another to produce what we call a tour. So last year I developed this uh, a certain tour for my university. It was, in, it was just a prototype and it received uh, positive feedback from students and from teachers and now they're actually using it for our new faculty development program. But for now, I'm going to just introduce this platform that I used. It's not, uh, I didn't create the platform. It's free. Mm. It's still in beta, so watch out for new developments. It was created in 2014 by Grumpy Sailor and uh, Google Cre Google's Creative Lab sure, in Sydney. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually used for digital storytelling and virtual tours. It uses 360 degree photos. You can d uh, develop your, own, uh, you can produce your own photos using a 360 degree camera, or you can download it for free from Flickr or from Pixel Bay. I'm gonna teach you how to do that later, and then you can put some audio. It can either be an um, ambient sound, which means that it's just playing while you're touring around, or hotspots, where you actually gaze on a certain spot in the environment and you can hear something. And then it also has paths. This is the third feature where you can link one story sphere to another to create a whole tour. Okay, so what do you need to view story spheres? You just need um, an iPhone or an iPad with iOS uh, version 8 and up. For iPad, the problem would be the sound will not be playing. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. So you can just go around the, the sphere, but you can't actually hear anything. And then uh, for Android, uh, you can use uh, version 5 and up. Version 5 is... So for the iPad, that's a glitch that that's being worked on? It's not really a glitch. I think they really didn't support iPad yet. Yeah, but yeah, I actually emailed them about that, but they said that they're still not uh, providing any features. What does V5 plus mean? It's a version five and up. I don't know the the code name for ice. Is that ice cream? What's version five? Because uh, Android has a certain name, right? For for every version. I think it might be KitKat. Maybe KitKat. Marshmallow. Maybe marshmallow. Mm -hmm. That's version five. <laughs> yeah, end up. Oh, no. So M N O P those <laughs> versions. <laughs> and then for a desktop computer, uh, you just need uh, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or Microsoft Edge. So if you have any of these four, then you're good. And then for creating, it's oops, what happens? <laughs> for creating, it's recommended that you use a desktop. So. Because your mobile devices cannot be used to create your own story spheres. But I think iPad can be used with limited features. Mm -hmm. So let's check it out later. Okay. Oh, it's again. Hello. It's just started, so you didn't miss. Okay. All right, so let's jump in. Oh, it's like disappeared again. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. <laughs> so you can click this 
link from your presentation if you open my presentation. Or you can use your QR uh, devices, but that's kind of difficult to do as well. This is one sample of a, a kind of a virtual tour of the Uluru Kata Juta National Park. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Then I'm going to let you hear yeah, something. Like Do you hear the ambience? Yeah. So this is what the scene actually produces. And you can hear an explanation. Do you see the symbols here? This music symbols? These are hotspots. So when you actually use your own VR device, when you gaze on that hotspot, you'll hear something. And then when you turn around and gaze on this hot spot, you'll hear something else. For us, it's a living thing because it's a living belief, it's a living people, a culture that's still alive. If, if it wasn't, then we would be lost. So you can hear an aspect of that place, you know, being explained by one of the locals. Some things can be burnt down and never replaced, but this is still alive, it's never been burnt. That's how it is ever since ancient times. Even through the country, some parts of the country are burnt. And that doesn't destroy the Jukopa that's held in that country. The Jukopa is still there. Okay, so, so we've seen the 360 photo, and then we've seen some audio um, clips that's being played for every part of the tour. And then if you want to go from one sphere to another, you can see this path here. When you use your H uh, HMD, <coughs> an advantage device, you can just gaze on this arrow and it will lead you to the next spot. It's not clicking. I don't know why it's not moving. Did it click on yours? Did it move to the Mine other? Is. Mine, Mine is still is loading. It's oh. says ninety-five percent. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I, I can move, but I can. I think they said that there's there's a hidden limit for the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, so it's probably the internet. Oh, there's emergencies. Yeah, I know. Okay. That. Or anyway, <laughs> it's probably just slow, but it will lead you to the next mm -hmm. sphere. So if you want to create your own, mm -hmm. it's actually very easy. Ah. Let's try that. First, go to storiespheres.com. So if you want to try it, uh, go to this website. I'm going to go now, storiespheres.com. Oh yeah, it's the, it's the internet connection. Yeah, yeah, we got logged out. That's why it wasn't connecting. Guest 005. Cube 2019. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Just refresh. Yay. Okay. So when you go to Story Spheres, you have to log in. You can use your Google uh, account, any Google account. So click on Log In to Create there. So if you. If I'm too fast, just raise your hand so I can go back. Are we all there? No, no, okay. no I'll take log in now. Yep, okay. So I'm gonna log in to create. So you you can choose from any of your Google accounts. I'm gonna choose one. Those are your Google accounts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why does my iPad say well, not secure? Oh, no, no, so the there that you have to put that, the... Uh, ah, yeah, you have to connect to the internet. And then, like, the cube to... Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm online. But I want to store fears. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you have to log in there yeah. to be actually online. Because you're connected to the Wi-Fi of this campus right now. Right, right, right. You so have you to have to log in, in again, because you got logged out. I got, I got logged out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's the problem. That's I think all of us got logged out. <laughs> So you can see the, the story spheres that are created by the community. Mm. 
You can also share yours so that others can use it. Yes. So yeah, usually when I have my own 360 degree photos, I just you know load load them here and put some of my explanations. Yeah. Sorry? It's web based? It's web based, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have to use a browser. Yeah. And maybe adjust the brightness of the screen to keep it bright for a longer time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, because that's a problem, right? Yeah. Mm. Like the, the sleep mode? The yeah. automatic sleep. Yeah, you have to turn it off. Yeah. Okay, so if we're ready, then we can start creating. Click on create. It's kind of small here. <laughs> but these are what are required. The first would be the title of your story sphere. So maybe you can type my first story sphere and a short description. I'll just do my first story sphere again. And then you have to accept the terms and conditions before uploading the content and then press next. Okay. Did we all do that? Well, actually, I got locked out. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. But like, you can move on. Like, yeah, sure. Just, um, yeah, it's just follow. that the, the text is kind of not that clear. I don't know why. This server thing is very super annoying. Can you read it now? <laughs> yeah. OK. So if we go back to the presentation, I shared a link to a website where you can download 360 degree photos for free. Because there are two options. It's either you produce the photos yourself or you can get photos from the web. Right? Yes? How difficult is it to create your own 360 photos? It's not too difficult as long as you have the device. Actually, uh, Josh is on his way here. And if we have enough time later, he's going to show us how to, have, uh, to create your, produce your own 360 degree photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also possible to make 360 photos by stitching together a bunch of other photos. Right. I'm sure there's some apps too for doing Yes. Mm. And I think, Bobby, is it, some of these work with just like large panoramas, not that doesn't have to be a 360 photo. Have you ever tried that? Yeah, so, some of them can be panoramas, but it, the tour can kind of seem incomplete because yeah. when you turn around, then you won't see a part of the okay. scene. And that might ruin the experience of the student. But I think uh, some phones are now uh, allowing you to do 360. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like not just panorama, panorama, but 360. I think there's a, uh, there's a feature now in some Because there's front and back camera. And so you can get some app that yeah. will let you take right. two pictures, all, all two pictures at, two the at the same time. Oh, right. okay. Like it means that you're always standing by the person. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still better to have your own, <laughs> you have your own 360 degree camera. Okay, but if you don't want to have that, then you can just uh, go here to this website. So I'm going to go to this website. Hopefully I'm not logged out. Okay. So you can choose from th these photos. I'm going to choose... Is it possible to search within this collection? Or? Mm. I was just trying to find a 360 of Kobe four tower. <laughs> I haven't tried, but maybe you can. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was for all photos. I, I usually use my own photos, so uh, I just looked for a website that could kind of give us free images. So this is one. I don't know where this is, but I'm going to download it anyway. If you want to download it, just click this. This icon. This icon means download. And you can choose a uh, size. I'm going to choose... I'm going to choose the largest one, maybe. Oh, the owner disabled downloading. So maybe we can look for another one. What did I choose a while ago? Maybe this one is better. Waikiki. I'm going to use Waikiki. OK, now that it's downloaded, we can go back to our story sphere. 
and click upload 360 degree image. Are we all there? Yeah. What is, what is the file type? Is it just a JPEG? JPEG, yeah, it's just JPEG. So it's kind of small then, right? It's not too big? Yeah, mm -hmm. not too big. So now it's going to be loaded onto the stories here. And once it's loaded, you can just drag your mouse to see the whole image, up and down, mm -hmm. left and right. Okay. Later, maybe you can experience it using the uh, Google Cardboard, so you can see the difference between the immersive version and the non-immersive version. Okay. And then press next. <coughs> Were you able to select your image? Is there any sort of what size do you recommend? Or uh, for downloading? Well, Flickr, Pe uh, Pixel Bay, Pixel.com, they all have uh, a pool of 360 degree photos for free. Oh, and I'm looking at that, sorry, it just gave me like a size option. Yeah. So oh, when you want ah, the size option. Photo. It's usually 1024. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. That resolution is okay, thank you. Yeah, the, the resolution is tricky because mm. you want it large so you can, because it's not like looking at a static photo with a bunch of pixels stuck mm -hmm. into one view. You're actually stretching the photo, the right. pixels out to 360. So if yeah. it's the same resolution as what you were looking on your PC, it would actually look kind of grainy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know like this one here is like, just like 4K or something. So I was wondering yeah. if you Maybe 4K is better. better. If you have 4K, mm -hmm. then just download 4K. But yeah. then again, if you're in a situation like we're at with Wi-Fi yeah, that's why I'm putting yeah. it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's really tricky. Yeah, 360 videos all have that problem too because the video is yeah. like four and sometimes 8K and it's just too much to bear. Right. Issues. Okay. okay, so are we done with uploading? I can give you time, it's fine. If you don't have your Google Passport, is it another way to get into that site? Um, I haven't tried, but it's usually Google accounts that they they let. I mean, I don't have it memorized. But oh, well, you can create a new account. Oh, just maybe? make a new one. Yeah. <coughs> Is it owned by Google? No. It's uh, it's in partnership with Google. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Which is actually good because it can be accessed in China. Because if it's owned by Google, then it's probably not accessible in China. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, um, we have we have this project with some Chinese universities using Story Spheres, and they were concerned about it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, so we tried we tried accessing it in China, and it, it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Google um, helped create the the software, mm -hmm. but then um, I can't go to the outside like browser to try to upload the picture. It only takes me to the iPad. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> So you go to the photo library. Did you download the photo already from the photo? Oh, so like I have to do it. So yeah, you I download it first and then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, iPad is kind of tricky. Uh, uh, so if you're okay. using an iPad, you save the photo first. Sure. So it's okay, going to okay. be in your gallery, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I missed that part, sorry. Oh, no worries. We have different uh, devices, so we have different use cases, different experiences. So if you need help, uh, we'll be happy to assist you. For those who are done, um, the next step would be uploading audio, because we want the uh, the tour to be interactive. You know, people like the the users will hear explanation uh, about the place when they look somewhere. But you have an option too to provide ambient sounds. You know, when when you want them to feel that they are near the ocean, then you can download a MP, an MP3 file of an ocean or record the sound of the place that you've taken a photo of and then upload that as a background sound. How do we do that? So before we upload the, the audio image, I just want to show you a cool online recorder. It's called, it's Poodle, <laughs> which is a, a plugin of Moodle. But then the website is recordmp3online.com. It's also on my presentation. So if you just go to the next slide, just click on the next link, recordmp3online.com. And it will show you this interface. If you want to quickly record something without installing uh, software, just go to this website. And then since my, 
my story sphere is uh, Waikiki Beach, then I'm gonna try to create the sound of water. <laughs> uh, just just for this demo. <laughs> okay. So when you click this green icon, this record icon, you can start recording actually. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. Of course it's lousy, but <laughs> I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Um, and then we can start uploading it. Click upload after that. So the, the, the recorded sound is now being converted into a file. This is the name of the file. And now you can actually download it. You see this button? Just click download and you have your mp3 file. So now let's try to upload that mp3 file and make it into <coughs> our tour's background. Upload it, select it from your downloads folder, and it's gonna be there. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But you get the idea, right? <laughs> so it's just gonna loop, actually. So if you want, you can just uh, record the sound of water or the sound of birds chirping. It's going to loop. It's kind of annoying, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, so you can just put it anywhere because it's a background sound. I'm going to, I'm probably going to delete it. It's annoying. But if yours is better, then you can <laughs> put it in. And then there's this other type of uh, audio file, which is a hotspot, where if a user actually clicks on a certain uh, icon, then the sound will play. Or if you gaze on a certain icon. For example, we'll explain this area. Let's try to explain this area. This is, is this the Waikiki skyline? I can just say that, right? Yeah. Let's try that. You said it. <laughs> Sorry? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Thank you. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to say it. Okay. This is the Waikiki skyline. All right, and then we're gonna record it again. Oh, sorry. This is the Waikiki skyline. Upload. And then download. So this time, instead of playing in the background, it will be a hotspot. Let's click Upload Audio Files again, and then select the file that we just created. And then instead of clicking this, you click Hotspot. Mm -hmm. Hot, uh, hot. Hotspot. Hotspot. <laughs> and then press <coughs> Next. This is the location of the hotspot, so it doesn't actually pertain to the skyline, right? Yeah. If you want to put it to the right, location, then you use these sliders. You see these sliders? Mm. If you move the horizontal angle slider, then it goes to the left or to the right. Okay? So it's now here, right? You can also use the vertical angle slider to put it up or down. Okay. I'm going to put it here. And you can also use the depth slider to make it small or large. Those are the only three options that you have. Okay? And then we click next. You can put as many uh, hotspots as you like. And then you save it. Once you're done, you can actually share the link to your friends or to your students. You can click done. And that's your first story sphere. Mm -hmm. How do you share it to your students? You click it, and you see this link, that one? Just copy that and paste it onto your uh, Moodle or your uh, Google Classroom website. Or send it to them via email if you want. You can also put that on your website. Sorry? Can you put this on your website so someone's visiting your website and you want to introduce yes. yourself, yeah. like self-introductions? Yeah, actually, there is an option where you can embed it. Embed it in the website. So instead of them clicking it, they'll see it right, right, right when they visit. It. Okay. So it's actually cooler that way. So you can do even self-introductions. Right. Yes. Does this work with like a 360 video as well? Like no, uh, unfortunately this platform is only for 360 photos. Yeah. 
So photos that you want to overlay with sounds if you want to explain a certain scenery or a certain area. So we use this in our campus tour, actually. We took photos, 360 photos of different areas of our university and we put some explanation and yeah, we let the new teachers uh, <coughs> use it. Is, uh, would it be possible to have a class of students do that as one project? Yes. And then could you, uh, could you cut it and stitch it to make? Yeah. Actually, you can link, you can link uh, one tour with another right. using Path. So I haven't shown it yet, but I'm going to demo it now. So now that we have this, let's just test it for now. And you have your browser. The resolution is kind of not good because I, I used, I selected a low resolution uh, image. But maybe if you use a 4K one, it's going to be better. And then they're, they're going to hear the Kiki Skyline. Good. This is the Waikiki Skyline. So later, when you use the, uh, the VR device, then instead of clicking, you just gaze on it. Uh, you, will see, you will see this icon becoming blue. Once it's blue, then you'll hear the explanation. Yeah. Is, is there, a, in your opinion, an, an, a kind of optimum uh, time for a hotspot? Like 10 minutes is too long. Like, ah, well, in our experience, I think one, one hotspot should just probably be a minute or two. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, less than a minute, yes, maybe. Yeah. It's it going to be boring if they hear. Does so. it depend on what your purpose is, what you want to say? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's There's right. also been a lot of discussion about how, mo how much time you want people spending inside VR right. at any given time anyway. Like, so like maybe so like not just the hotspot, when but maybe the overall time you right. spend inside uh, like something that's still, a bit still grainy and yeah. maybe passing on the eyes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some Good. say around 10 minutes would be the max mm. for the whole experience. Okay, so let's gonna let let's try to link this to another story sphere. So I'm gonna click it. Wait. You click on my story spheres to see everything that you made. Oh, you haven't made another one. So uh, we're gonna make another one then, because we need at least two to link one story sphere to another. Can can you collab with a group? Yeah. Oh, but the group should use the same account, I think. Oh. So if they use the same account, then they can just uh, collab. Mm -hmm. Or so you can't, like, say, I make a sphere and then somebody else makes a sphere. You yeah, can I don't. Make a hotspot to connect those two mm, things. I don't think. If they're using different accounts, mm -hmm. then that's probably a problem. Do the hot, hot links have uh, wet, wet? Links that you can put into them? No. Can the paths are just from one sphere to another. That's probably the limit of the platform. Right, so if they're all using one password, that's just like one person making yeah, that's right. You uh, right. All of so them. maybe. So that would be easy to stitch together. I'm just thinking yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe you can't yeah. right now. Yeah. Next step. Yeah. Sphere 2. It's not so low. Let me check another uh, scenery that we want to link. Maybe this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the owner didn't allow me to download his file, so maybe this is better. <coughs> okay, I got this one. I'm gonna create another one quickly. And then let's record something. Welcome to Chungking Palace. You recording? Sorry about that. Welcome to Chungking Palace. Upload. And download. And the 
Look, the, the newly created sound file. Welcome to Chunking Pub. Okay, hotspot here. Okay, perfect. And then now we link it to the other stories here. See, uh, by the way, you wanted to embed it on your website, right? Mm. You can click this one, Embed Sphere. Embed. And it will give you, it will give you this link, this code. Okay. You just have to copy paste that onto your HTML file. And it's going to be embedded. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we link one to another. Or maybe that, that one first. Why is it not being edited? Oh, here. So click edit, and then click this one, this fourth button. This fourth button is link. You see link story spheres here? <coughs> Click that, and it will show you the list of spheres that you created. Right now we only have two, right? So this is the only option that I have. So sphere two, and then done. And it will actually produce an arrow, this arrow. This arrow will be the path to the next sphere. Um, so maybe this leads to China. <laughs> Maybe. It should go the other way, right? Yeah, it, it should. Yeah, you're right. Away from the... Okay, let's do that. If you say so. <laughs> this is kind of tricky. This one? This goes to China. <laughs> that goes to China. <laughs> maybe we fly to China. Let's just do... Maybe yeah. they can swim to China. Okay, let's just... Okay. Swim. Dig. Hi, Josh. Hi. We go down to China. I'm going to see. <laughs> Okay, now that it's connected, you can try to preview it. If you click this, it will just move to the next sphere, which is Chungking Palace, this one. Mm. Let's try that. Welcome to Chungking Palace. Yeah. So you can actually put different uh, paths. If it's like a real tour, when they turn right, they will go to the next, to the next area. Sphere. That's what we did for our university. Oh, okay. So I think the, the main consideration to make would be the quality of the images. Because uh, when we tried it the first time, the images were low quality, and the students kind of had a uh, hard time appreciating that. So we had to retake the photos. Mm. Wow. You had to use a special camera? Yes, we, uh, my, I used a Samsung Gear 360. But Josh here will be showing us how to create a 360 degree photo mm -hmm. using um, theta. a theta, yeah. So theta 5? Theta 5, yeah. Theta 5, yeah. Okay, I'm just in time. Yeah, you're just in time. Do you have any questions before Josh will show us how to so produce you your own 360 back. degree yeah. photo? Yeah. Have you made your own? So one one if you want to share two. yours to the group, <coughs> um, Please click on the next link, which is a survey. You can put your name, any name, and then the link of your story sphere, so that we can share it to the rest of the group and they can experience it, your own tour. Is this online somewhere again? So we see it later. Your yeah, presentation offer. Yeah, it will be uploaded onto Maver site. Okay. Yeah. Just all the all the videos and things. Will Everything will be there. Just to observe it. Have to do it again. This yeah. The session be recorded too, so you can follow along later on Maver site. So. Everything there. Okay. Even the, the the tours that you make will be there. <laughs> if ever you want to share it. <laughs> okay, any questions? Nothing else? Well, okay. These days there's lots of platforms that people are selling to English schools or uh, join our platform and work with us, be a partner. Right. How do you know which one's a good one? To be honest, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. that. Uh, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, I have no idea. Uh, well, of course, they're, they want to make money, right? They want to. They're in the business to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Online learning. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, yeah. I don't know. I I would say maybe how do you know find out what their what their function is and what they're trying right. to sell. Right. They're, they're doing this. Try to find something free first. And yeah, if it's, it's if, if it's if something that you know. 
Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just something that gives affords to you and your work is worth money. Right. Well, there's lots of companies out there. <laughs> Are you guys thinking about making something like that? Um. My tours would be uh, using, so I'm not yet done with my presentation actually. <laughs> my yeah, my tour will be. <laughs> oh, no, no, actually, your, your question is perfect because I'm going to use A frame to have a, a better experience. Because mm. in, uh, in my first try using Story Spheres, the problem is using Google Cardboard. Um, when you're using Google Cardboard, it doesn't actually go from one sphere to another smoothly because mm -hmm. Google Cardboard's uh, button doesn't actually, okay, so Google Cardboard has a button, this button, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to click on the path, uh, but actually it doesn't do that uh, well. A-frame is more flexible uh, in that sense, but to create a VR tour using A-frame, you need uh, you need to know how to do H to use HTML. Um, so um, there's this uh, online free online school called FrameVR.io mm -hmm. that you can try, and from this website you can you can learn how to create VR experiences using A-Frame. Do you have a, Do you have your site you can show us? My your your A-Frame site. Do I do I do I still have it? <laughs> A-frame is um, kind of like a, a um, standard for making web VR. So you not only for photospheres, what we're working with today, you can actually make yeah, virtual I think it's environments. Still yeah, there it is. So uh, from from that website, I created this this sample environment. You can do this using A-frame. But if you feel that uh, you don't need those kinds of features, then you can stick with story spheres. If it's just like digital storytelling, just one sphere, and then you want them to like listen to some explanations. Actually, some of the sample spheres are really interesting. Uh, one is about the Rohingya um, refugees. So it's, it's actually, you can try to explore the existing collection that they have. It's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. I just you don't wanted to share my Story sphere, but it says unavailable when I click on the link that you showed to share. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm not sure why. The survey? Yeah, you, you, the, this one here, share your story sphere, is coming up unavailable for me. Really? Is it a network issue? I don't think so. I'm still connected. Okay. Oh, let me try that again. Um, it's showing here though. I downloaded the PowerPoint using it that way. I, well, can you try just going to Google or Yahoo.com? Because uh, I have a suspicion that uh, you might have been disconnected. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, anyway. Kind of yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so if you have no more questions, then I'm going to be asking Josh to show us. Oh, okay. Show me Yeah, just real quick, right? Or. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>